Hello everyone and welcome back! In this lesson we are going to write our first reducer function that is linked to an NGRX entity, in this case the course entity that has this courses state. So if you remember the NGRX entity is going to be saved in the store in a very special format, it's going to be a map where the IDs are the course ID and the values are the course and we will also have an extra array to preserve the order of the courses. So this is the entity state format that we are using to save all the course data. We have just fetched here a course from the backend using this effect and we have dispatched it to the store using the course loaded action. Let's then go ahead and write the reducer logic for the course loaded action. So we are going to need here a reducer. We are going to create here a function and we are going to call it courses reducer. The reducer function will have the same signature as usual, so the first argument is going to be the state and the second argument is going to be the action that we are going to handle in this reducer. This action is going to be of type course actions, so it's going to be one of the actions defined here in this union type. The result of the reducer function, just like before, is going to be of type courses state. Let's now start implementing the body of our reducer. So as usual, we are going to do a switch on the action type and we are going to handle here multiple actions. Let's then add here a case clause for the action that we are handling now, which is the course loaded action. We are going to write here our reducer logic. Before implementing the reducer logic, we also want to add here, as usual, the default case clause that is going to handle the case when this reducer does not react to this particular action. So in this case, we don't know what reducer logic to apply to this action, so we are going to return the state without any further modification. Now let's go ahead and implement the course loaded reducer logic. So we essentially want to take the course from the action payload and we want to add it to the course's state. In order to manipulate the course state, because it's in this very specific entity state format with a map and an array, we don't want to handle that state directly. Instead, we want to use the adapter to modify the course's state. This adapter makes it very simple to implement our reducers. It's one of its main features. It will also make it very simple for us to implement our selectors. Right now, we want to use the adapter to add an entity to our course's state, so we are going to be using this add one function that we see here. The first argument that we are going to pass it is the course that we want to add to the state store, so we are going to retrieve that from the action payload, and then we just need to pass here as the second argument the initial state that we were modifying. So add one is going to take the course that we have here on the payload, it's going to add it to the entity state map and it's going to add the ID of the state to the array that preserves the order of the courses. Notice that the adapter is going to do that by creating copies of the entities and the IDs array. As we can see the adapter makes it really simple to write our reducer logic for this type of entities. We now have the initial version of our courses reducer ready. We are almost ready to try this new logic that loads a course in the store. Before that we need to take our courses reducer and we need to register it in the courses module. For that we are going to be using store module for feature and in here we need to pass the reducer that corresponds to this feature module. First we need to pass in here a string that identifies under which property the feature state is going to be visible in the dev tools. So we are going to make the state visible under the courses property and here we need to pass in the reducer that we are going to be using for reducing this state which is going to be the courses reducer that we have just defined. After registering our courses reducer, the last thing that we have to do now before trying this out is to define what is the initial value of the courses state. So we can also use our adapter here to define the initial state of the courses feature state. Let's then define this initial state. Let's define here a variable which is going to be of type courses state. 
and this variable we are going to define it using again the adapter. So we have here a method get initial state that will help us to define here the initial entity state for courses. As usual, we simply have to take the initial state and define it here as the default value of the state argument. And with this in place, we are ready to see our course entity in action. Let's then switch here to a larger window and we're going to go ahead and reload our application. We're going to switch here to the dev tools and we're going to have a look at our state. So this is the initial state of the application. As we can see in the raw view, we can see that we have here some router state, which contains all the state in the URL. We have the authentication feature state that we have implemented before. So the user is currently logged in and notice here that we have now now a new feature state under the courses property. So as expected, this is stored in the entity state format. We have here a map with entities that are going to be courses stored by ID. And we have here an array which is currently empty that is going to help us to preserve the order of the courses as the entities object itself, like any JavaScript object, does not have any order associated to its properties. Let's then go ahead and keep an eye here on the action log as we click here on view course and we navigate to the view course page. So if we do that, we are going to see that we have here a couple of actions that were triggered. We have here view course page, the course was requested and we have here another action triggered by the courses API where the course was loaded in memory. And as we can see here in our courses feature state, we now have here a new entity. If we look inside here the entities map, we can see that the key for this course is actually zero, as we can see here on the course object that is present here on the entity map. And we have here on the IDs array, the key value zero. So this is how an NGRX entity is captured in the store. Notice how the convention that we are using here in the action log makes it really simple to understand what is going on. A developer just by looking here at the action log can have a very good idea of where each action came from. As we can see, our implementation is working as expected and we have concluded the implementation of the course resolver using the NGRX store solution instead of making calls to the backend each time. Let's now continue to refactor our application in order to use more and more a store solution. Let's go to the courses list screen and add now the complete courses list to the store. 